What's up guys, I hope you're doing really well. As always, it's Mark here back with another video. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about using Wacom tablets um, with Adobe Photoshop in comparison to using an iPad Pro with Procreate. Um, a lot of people do ask me questions about this and a lot of people seem really interested in which one they should invest in. Um, obviously the iPad Pro has become insanely popular with Procreate lately and there's a lot of good reasons for why that is. So I wanted to make a video and just sort of talk about some of the differences. So if you are, um, you know, a digital designer or an illustrator or you do a lot of um, digital painting and that's, that's your passion and you're trying to decide which one, then um, hopefully this should help you out. So I think before we get stuck in, we need to make sure we're comparing apples with apples, right? So this video and this comparison is really from the perspective of someone that's using these applications primarily to draw and do like digital illustrations, lettering, that kind of stuff, digital painting, all, all that sort of thing. So for example, if you are like a, a UI designer, for example, this isn't really um, applicable to you because obviously you probably wouldn't be using Procreate anyway. You would just use like Adobe XD or something, which is you know what that application is designed for. So yeah, anyway, this is for someone who's interested in sketching, drawing, illustrations, you know, designing t-shirts, cool stuff like that. Not that designing UIs is not cool, by the way, sorry. Um, also, just quickly, my experiences so far, you might be wondering which ones I've used and stuff like that, you know, who am I to talk about it? Well, I've got, um, I've had two different uh, Wacom tablets now. I started off on one of the ones uh, back in the day, Intuos Pro, that didn't have the screen. Um, then I invested in one of the Wacom Cintiq Pro 13 HDs, which is what I've used for most of my drawing tutorials and live streams with you guys. Um, that's been kind of like my workhorse, I guess, for the last four or five years. Um, and it suited me really, really well. When iPad Pros first came out and Procreate started to really get hyped up, I invested in one straight away, uh, kind of an impulse buy, I guess. And after about six months, um, I guess maybe I wasn't that impressed or maybe I just wasn't transitioning well enough or whatever, but for whatever reason, I, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was as good as my Wacom at the time. Um, so I actually sold it. Then about 12 months later, I sort of rethought that decision and sort of well maybe i was just like stuck in my ways you know um and not really willing to give it a good enough shot so then i went out and bought a new ipad pro from the latest version at that time um see so yeah, i bought a new one and i've been using that with procreate ever since alongside my wacom so i actually chop and change depending on, on my mood quite literally just it just depends some days i feel like using the wacom some days i feel like using the ipad um, so I've used both of them heaps. I've used both of them to design logos, t-shirts, posters, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, I've used Procreate even to sketch out entire font alphabets before I take them to the computer and turn them into fonts and stuff like that. So um, there's heaps of stuff that you can do on both of these. So let's get stuck into the comparison. So I think the first thing to talk about really quickly is the price, right? So um, iPad Pros, I guess they are a little bit expensive still, um, Worth keeping in mind that for me, I'm Australian, so prices will be in Australian dollars, which is generally a bit more expensive than other countries as well. Things are a bit more expensive here in Australia because we're super isolated, I guess. Uh, so an iPad Pro uh, these days, if you get, I think, an 11 inch, will be about 1,230 Australian dollars. So, um, and then I believe you have to buy the pencil on top of that, which is another $100. $100. So it's not cheap, right? You want to think about this sort of thing pretty carefully before you invest that kind of money. Um, then for the actual software, so to use Procreate, if I remember correctly, it's about 10 or $11 on the store. Um, it's a one-time payment and you get free updates for life and they are constantly updating that software. It is crazy how often I'm getting, you know, notifications about new features and stuff that's being added. And I really take my hat off to them because, you know, it's a one-time fee. They could be charging a subscription, but they don't. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty crazy actually. Like. I wonder about the money that they're even making. They could be easily charging five bucks a month and no one would bat an eyelid and they could make a fortune. So, you know, um, take my hat off to them for that really. Now the Wacom tablets. So I'll be comparing against the Cintiq tablet, right? Which is one of the ones with the screen. Um, to get one of those these days about the same sort of size, I think it's 13 is the smallest size you can get. So I'll use that for my reference point, but that's about $1,175. So it's a little bit cheaper. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that that version attaches to a computer. So it's not a mobile tablet in the same way that an iPad is where you can take it anywhere, draw with it anywhere, use other apps and stuff like that. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to invest in one of the Wacom, I think they call them pen computers instead of pen tablets. So it's actually mobile and you can take it anywhere like you would with a laptop or, or an iPad. And those bad boys are super expensive. So if you wanted to get one that's 13 inch, which I think is the, I'm pretty confident it's the smallest size that you can get, Australian dollars, you're looking at like 
2500 $2,600. Like they're super, super expensive um, considering the computer specs in them actually aren't that impressive um, at all. Uh, and yet yeah, in general, uh, from what I've read about them, they're not super powerful uh, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, pretty, pretty pricey really. So the next thing I wanna talk about is support and also just community engagement and engaging with the companies and getting feedback and support and that sort of thing, right? So Apple, um, Apple support, I think for the size of the company, Apple support is actually pretty good, right? Like if something is wrong with your iPad, if it breaks or doesn't work, at least you know you can take it into an Apple store and get someone to at least look at it. Maybe you'll have to pay some money, maybe you won't, whatever. At least there's a clear path to getting something fixed. Um, Procreate, I've had some uh, pretty positive experiences with. First of all, Procreate, they're super, super engaging. Like they're all over social media. They're constantly replying to questions. You tag your work with Procreate and they comment on it and stuff like that. They're always uploading little mini tutorials on their Instagram stories and stuff like that. Um, I've messaged them about a couple of things before and asked questions and they've replied. So I think from yeah support and engagement perspective, they're doing a perfect job. Like they are above and beyond you know, Apple and Wacom and Adobe, all the companies. So for me, that's really, really impressive. Again, considering they're only charging $11 one time fee uh, and they are, you know, willing to engage and constantly, you know, reach out and, and add new features and respond to questions and all that kind of thing. I, I really applaud that. Uh, so moving on to the Wacom and Adobe, um, support for Adobe products is historically pretty trash. So yeah, I don't know about you, but I've been using Adobe products now since CS2. So I, I don't even want to know how it's over a decade. I'm pretty sure I just started using them in high school. I'm nearly 29 and I was in grade 11. So what's that 15 or 16 years old when I started using Photoshop for the very first time to manipulate photos and stuff. I've tried to contact Adobe many times and anytime I've had issues, errors, um, that sort of thing. You have to go through forums. It's hard. You wait ages for a response. You're better off going to a forum and trying to find another user who's had the same problem as you and getting feedback, uh, sorry, getting you know advice from them and stuff like that. That's pretty much how you're going to fix your problems. Otherwise, you're pretty much out of luck. Adobe, um, yeah, horrible tech support, really. Um, oh, I just realized as well, when I was talking about price, I didn't talk about the price of the Adobe Suite. Sorry. So that'll depend you know, on how many apps you want and also the size of your business, how many computers, blah, 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 blah. To give you some perspective, for me as a sole trader for the whole Creative Cloud suite, I pay $75 a month, which in my opinion is super, super expensive. Um, it actually got hyped, but the prices went up by four, like heaps lately. I used to pay $25 a month and I think six months ago, um, when it came up to the end of my 12 month thingy, the price had gone up to $75 a month, so it had tripled, so that's pretty crazy again. To be fair, that's for the whole suite. So I think if I was just buying Photoshop, it's $25 a month. But um, you know, I use Illustrator and some other stuff as well. So I might as well get the whole suite at that 75 bucks. Anyway, so moving back on, um, support for Wacom. Yeah, it not, not amazing either from my experiences and from other designers that I've spoken with. Um, I don't wanna to comment too much about their support because I haven't really tried to contact them that much. But when I have, it's been pretty bad. Um, historically, Wacom tablets have had tons of driver issues and stuff like that. And so you used to have to go through forums and find support for like why the driver didn't install properly and all kinds of stuff like that. And you could never really get much help from, from the company. Maybe they've changed. I don't want to throw them under the bus completely because it's been a while. But yeah, I would say that generally it's still Procreate and Apple better support. So they get, they get my, my vote for that one. So the next thing, and probably the most important thing really, is is about features and usability. So I think Procreate and iPads in general, I mean, Apple products, I guess, always get a lot of hype for just being really user-friendly, right? Like you can walk into an Apple store, grab an iPad and just fumble around with Procreate and before you know what you're like drawing and sketching and just doing weird stuff, right? Whereas I think with, um, Photoshop and a Wacom tablet, like you've got to do a bunch of installations, install the drivers, figure out what, what all the tools mean. If you've never used Photoshop before, I feel sorry for you because there's so many tools that it, like, I couldn't imagine having to learn that from scratch again. It's, it's pretty crazy. So um, usability, so much better on Procreate and the iPad. It's just so much better. As far as features are concerned, um, well, I mean, Photoshop and Procreate are designed with different audiences in mind. Photoshop, as the name suggests, was originally designed for shopping photos and stuff like that, right? So Photoshop has a really, really broad tool set, more broad than Procreate, 
but it's also for way more uses and things like that. You could do, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you could do a lot more custom effects and filters and, and stuff like that in Photoshop compared to what you can do in Procreate still. Um, having said that, at the same time, if you really wanted to, you can export your artwork from Procreate as a, as a file into Photoshop and it works really, really quite well. So if you wanted to fork out the cash for both Procreate and Adobe without buying a Wacom, you can still do that. And um, sometimes I do that, I draw a lot of stuff on the on the tablet and then I might do some finishing textures or some effects and noise and, and distortions and stuff once I get it into Photoshop and play around with it a bit more there. But you know, each to their own. So other features, um, I think text. Text is the biggest thing that holds back Procreate. So Procreate is really designed for drawing and illustration. There's not really any cool way or easy way to add text. At the moment, the, the best ways that I've seen people add text is they will download a brush pack off the internet and, and the brushes are literally letters from, from a thing. So you hit the A brush, draw the A and, and stuff like that. Um, I think if Procreate add some kind of way to deal with type, that's really, really massive. Then, then it becomes uh, on another level for me. So right now, because as you know, I do a lot of type, a lot of lettering, font design, that kind of thing. If I was say drawing a poster for a band, um, you know, I'd want to design that. I could design the whole thing in Procreate and it could look awesome. Could write the band's name, draw it and stuff like that in Procreate. But then you want to add stuff like all the different dates for the tour, right? You don't really want to hand draw that. I mean, you could if that's the style you're going for, but if you could just simply tap on it and add text and pick a font that's installed on the iPad and type it out and just align it yourself, like that would be awesome. It would be so, so much better. So Photoshop and Illustrator both have crazy amounts of um, customization and functionality when it comes to type. Uh, so they get the vote for that one for sure. Um, I think if I could do something like you know, I could draw a line in Procreate, like a curve around a shape, and then I could use that as a path and somehow draw type text onto it. That would be so, so cool. Um, there are other apps on the iPad that can help you do that sort of stuff, but still inside of Procreate would be pretty sweet. Um, I don't hold my breath that, they can, they, that they'll can that they do that though. I don't think it's quite their intention anyway. Uh, so that probably won't happen. As far as custom brushes and blending and, and stuff like that, it used to be the case that Photoshop was better, right? So um, when I first had the iPad Pro even, the blending and things like that, if you're a digital painter and you wanted to you know, get really customized brushes and blending and stuff like that um, for different textures like oil painting and all those really, really nice artworks, um, you kind of had to use Photoshop still, right? The brushes, there was just an endless library of brushes you could get off the internet and so much customization that Procreate couldn't compete at that at that point in time. That's really changed though now. So Procreate now has an insane amount of custom brush packs. In fact, most of the brush packs that I've bought for Photoshop have now had Procreate versions made by the owners. And if you go on sites like Creative Market and you look at brush packs, they'll almost always release both a Photoshop and a Procreate version. So that landscape has really changed. Uh, I follow a lot of guys online, even though I don't do any digital painting at all, I actually follow a lot of YouTube channels and stuff and watch a lot of time lapses of people doing digital painting in Procreate and the results now are amazing. Like it's, a, it's an incredible skill, I wish I could do that as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another thing. The final feature, in my opinion, that it is really distinguishing between the two is the line correction and smoothing and stuff like that. So in Procreate, as you probably know, you can, draw with the streamline setting on for starters, which is really good. Photoshop has something similar called smoothing. It's also really good to be fair. Uh, so you can do the same sort of thing and you can even download little add-ons to plug into Photoshop um, that correct you know, line strokes and stuff, which is pretty cool. But one thing Procreate does way better is the ability to you know, draw, draw a line, hold it down, and it will correct it to a perfectly straight line for you. That's, that's really cool, it's really useful. Um, but the thing that takes to the next level is if you draw a curve, not even doesn't even have to be a full circle, it can be a curved line and still hold it down, Procreate will snap to fix up that curve for you. And that's really interesting. Um, I think if you're into lettering like I am and you probably have seen a lot of my scripts and stuff like that if you follow me, think about drawing like a cursive capital C, for example. So you just draw that and it's a bit bumpy, you're like, oh, it's not quite right. I would normally go in and have to fix that and all that sort of thing. I can just hold it down now and Procreate does all the work. Like it's crazy. It's kind of taken away my job, it took my jobs. Um, yeah, that, that's crazy. Same thing if I do a capital D and stuff like that, little nice custom swashes and things underneath words and all, all that sort of thing. It's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty insane. So um, overall, I think, yeah, I guess in summary, 
for me, well, yeah, those those are the main points that I would talk about. There, there's more to it, obviously. There's technical um, specs and some other bits and pieces, but for me, those are the main selling points on what you should be thinking about when when making that kind of decision. For me, right now, if I'd never used either of them, I would probably just roll with the iPad. Um, the ongoing support is going to be better. They've become more popular. Um, they're easy to get secondhand off, like Gumtree and you know eBay and stuff like that. Um, support is better there's tons and tons and tons of free apps on the store now as well for taking your drawing to the next level outside of procreate you can still just you know finish your work in Photoshop on a computer if you really want to which is what I do for a lot of stuff you know I might draw it in um, procreate and then maybe I need to add some pen tools type in Illustrator and stuff like that so yeah th those are just my my two cents I guess for me right now the iPad is the winner and that's what I'm really trying to learn more on and I'll be uh, releasing a bunch of new brush packs and that sort of thing too, soon too. And also, if there's anything that you want to learn uh, in Procreate, you want me to make some Procreate tutorials for a change, just let me know what you'd like to see. Um, actually, I've just finished recording one as well. But yeah, just let me know. And yeah, that's all I have to say. So if you enjoyed the video, guys, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, you can subscribe to the channel if you want. That's um, super, super helpful for me. And yeah, have a good one.